championship tradition continues. Georgia Southern football with coach Paul Johnson. This week's highlights are brought to you in part by East Georgia Medical Center. Compassionate care without compromise. Coca-Cola, always Coke. And by Rozier Ford in Statesboro, the dealership that does business the right way. Georgia Southern football with coach Paul Johnson. Welcome to Georgia Southern Football 2001. I'm Brady Post alongside Eagles head coach Paul Johnson. Coach, it's the second round of the playoffs, and maybe people weren't convinced that we beat App State the first time around. We're, we're matched up against, against them one more time. Well, it's like replaying the Southern Conference all over again, but uh, certainly they've got an outstanding football team and a great program, and we've got a lot of respect for them. I think that... Uh, they're as physical as anybody in the country, and it ought to be a heck of a game. A, a very physical game in the, the first meeting between the team. Uh, they held Adrian under 100 yards, and they also held us to, to zero passing yards in the game. Well, uh, yeah, we only <laughs> threw it five times, and the weather was a little rough, and the field was slick. But uh, the big thing was we won the game. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'll take complete no passes again today. If they'll tell me we can win right now, we won't even throw one. Seems like App State may have tried to run the ball later in the season after they faced us. Well, I think they've gotten more, had more success with their running game, and that's a big concern today. Uh, they're very physical, and we're going to have to to stop that to have a chance. And big plays were uh, were a key of the first meeting we saw, especially early in the game. Well, big plays. We had some big stops on defense in the red zone, and that was huge. Uh, you know, we had some guys come off the bench and play well, and. Uh, that might be the same scenario today. You never know in a game like this uh, who's going to make the big play. Finally, the, the keys to winning today's game at home. Well, they never change. We've got to run the ball successfully, hopefully hit a little play action and get some passing game and uh, and stop them from running the ball. Coach, good luck today against App State. When we come back, we'll have first half highlights of Georgia Southern versus Appalachian State. But first, it's the Coca-Cola play of the day. Georgia Southern football 2001 coach uh, a good crowd for the second round of the playoffs here we win the coin toss and defer to the second half to give them the ball first right and uh, go out and kick the ball out of bounds and give them great field position and uh, then they put together a little drive aided by a uh, some kind of penalty where they said it was uh, contact to the head but uh, gave them another 15 yards but uh, you know, when they got down there, we were able to bow up and uh, make them have to kick a field goal. About a fourth and two, Mark Wright hit a 41-yard field goal, and that put App State up 3 nothing. four minutes and 50 seconds into the game. Our first possession is our only possession of the first quarter, and we start off on second and 10, and JR takes off for a nice 13-yard run. Right. Uh, I thought that we did a much better job today blocking them up front. Uh, the last time, we kind of got uh, manhandled up there, and, and today we had made some uh, some minor adjustments, and, and uh, our guys played harder, I thought. We, we, we played well up front. On a third and eight, a big play by Mark Myers, a nice determined cutback. He picked up the first down on that. Right. A nice, nice run by Mark on the pitch. They had a lot of guys out there, and he made a lot of folks miss on that play. Third and inches, uh, JR drops back to pass, and he's sacked to the 34, and uh, th that was that was big for field position. Well, it, it was, and, you know, I probably outsmarted myself. We had third and inches, and I thought we'd try to hit a little play action pass, mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't protect it very well, and, and I don't think Jay saw the guy coming. My intention was, you know, if it's incomplete, just throw it away, and we'll go for it on fourth down. It's short. But uh, basically, it was a big play by, by them and took us out of field goal range because we were kind of going into the wind. And that sets up a, a fourth and nine, but Scott Shelton comes up with a great punt, pins him down on the two-yard line. Right, a great punt, and uh, you got exactly what we wanted. We had them uh, hemmed up back there inside their own five-yard line. App State takes over. They pick up two first downs. But we force them to punt. Unfortunately, it was a 69-yard punt that well, reversed the field on us. That's the bad news. You punt them out on the two, and they punt you back out on the eight. So they changed the whole field by, by moving the ball and knocking it out of there. Only three possessions in the first quarter is over, so we go to the second quarter, and on our first possession, on first down from the 17, Mark Myers takes off for a 10-yard run in first down. Right, and we were moving the ball some, I thought, in the first half. We were struggling when we got down in the, in the red zone a little bit. But, 
you know, I felt good about what we were trying to do in our plan, and, I, you know, you just have to be patient and stick with it. Two plays later, Zreen continues his good postseason play, a nice 19-yard run on the option. Right, and, uh, you know, we were getting uh, getting the ball pitched, and, and we weren't getting great blocks on the perimeter, but just enough to get our guys loose. A lot of players touching the ball on second and seven. It's T.J. Anderson, nine yards, and another first down to keep the drive alive. Right, and again, Jay was doing a good job running the offense and, and executing and reading the thing out. And probably the biggest play of that drive was on third and 11 when Adrian broke loose for a 25-yard first down run. Nice play, and again, I think we caught him a little bit by surprise by running the option on third and 11. And that takes it all the way down to the 13-yard line. Finally, on fourth and one, Scott Shelton, 22-yard field goal, and it's 3-3 three to three with 9.02 left in the half. Georgia Southern kicks off to App State, and on third down, uh, Sterling Hayward with a catch, but he gets popped during the, the run for the first down, and Michael Youngblood recovers the fumble. Well, which was really big. I, I thought that, uh, you know, the score is kind of misleading. I thought we played well on defense, and uh, the, uh, you know, we were popping some guys, and uh, anytime you uh, can can force turnovers, you got to love that. So we take over on the 32-yard line, second and 11, big play from J.R. to Zareem Walden for a 15-yard gain. Well, play action, and uh, Jay did a nice job. Z did, had made a good read and sat down out on the side sideline, and uh, Jay was able to get him the ball. Fourth and one down uh, close to the, to the, in the red zone, and uh, go for it on, on, give it to Adrian, no gain, and well, we turn it over on and down. that's one of the plays that we probably didn't execute. We, we had the option called, and, and quite honestly, we missed the read. You know, we, I think that, you know, we might have been thinking that it was short yardage, so he handed it off in there, and, and you can't do that. If you're going to run the option, you got to, if they take the guy, you got to pull it and pitch it. It doesn't matter what the down and distance is, and uh, to their credit, they made a play, and we didn't, but at least we had them pinned up back in there again. And App State pretty much shot themselves in the foot on the first down with a procedure penalty to force them on third and long, and on fourth and 11, they punt, and Anthony Williams does his thing, 58-yard return for a touchdown. And the 35-yard extra point because I guess we were a little too happy on that. Well, you know, I don't know what, what why they call celebration, but that I've seen a lot worse against people when they score against us. But it's a great play by Ant. And, you know, he caught it and he went straight up the field. No dancing, no running around. And when you do that on a punt return, if you make one guy miss, they're spread out covering the field. you got a chance for a big punt. A big touchdown and the only touchdown of the first half gives Georgia Southern a 10-3 lead with three and a half minutes left in the half. And... App takes over, and on third and inches, Burchette picks it up, and first down, Burchette runs, fumbles, recovered by Eric Hadley, and we take the ball back. Well, there again, he, you know, he, he pulled it down off the pass and took off and had him a pretty good gain, and, and we came up and popped him pretty good, knocked the ball loose, and, uh, and got it back. It was a big, uh, big play. Unfortunately, we weren't able to score again before the half, but the defense hasn't allowed any big plays, and we didn't turn the ball over in the first half, up, up 10 to 3 going to the half. Right, and it had been a kind of a funny game, not a lot of possessions, as you talked about, and, uh, you know, some, the teams had kind of moved the ball in the middle of the field, but when it got down uh, close, you know, we'd forced them into some turnovers, and, and they had stopped us on fourth down and, and in the red zone. So, you know, it felt like, uh, I felt like we were in great shape. I knew we hadn't played as well as we could play, and uh, we're ahead 10-3, getting the ball first start the second half. Just over an hour for the first half to, to, uh, to last, and when we come back the second half, a little bit different, a lot more scoring, when we come back to Georgia Southern Football 2001. Back to Georgia Southern Football 2001. Time now for the Auto Shine Ask Coach Johnson question. Coach, a, a Bill Dollar from Rinkin, Georgia asks, do you think GSU can recruit and compete at the 1A level? And if so, do you think it will ever happen? Well, I don't think there's any question that we could recruit and compete at the 1A level if we could financially support it. I think the program uh, has enough of a reputation and we've won enough games and enough championships and uh, that you could do that. I think the big question is could you support it financially because you're not only talking about uh, football scholarships, you're talking about Title IX and gender equity and all those things that you'd have to do and uh, I certainly hope that they can someday at Georgia Southern. I think that uh, you know it's it's a great school and, and you know we got rabid fans and there's so much tradition. I would certainly hope that one day uh, they could make the jump but uh, 
right now there'd have to be a, a lot more of a financial commitment than there is. And there's nothing wrong with winning one AA national championships either on top of that. <laughs> well, there's not, and uh, hopefully uh, hopefully we can kind of keep it going this year and have a chance to, to maybe win another one. All right, Coach, when we come back, second half highlights of Georgia Southern versus App State. And if you want to be involved in the Ask Coach Johnson question, just email us at the station, abc22tv.com. And if we use your question, you'll win a limited edition autographed national championship print. When we come back, second half highlights, App State and Georgia Southern. Ask the coach and win big. Send in a postcard or register online at abc22tv.com with a question about the Georgia Southern Eagles. Then watch Sundays at 1 with Brady Fosick and Coach Paul Johnson. If your question is selected, you'll win an autographed limited edition print and be in the running to win an autographed Eagles jersey. So register today. Then watch all the action Sundays at 1 on Georgia Southern Football with Coach Paul Johnson on ABC 22. You know how physical they are, but when people come around telling you how, how much more physical they are than you, you know, you've already seen it, you know what's going to happen. You, know, you just got to bring the best game you can on Saturday. And it was hot. It has been a long time since they played in the heat, probably. And we didn't use that to our advantage. The score didn't speak for what the defense did today, because we, we did a pretty good job today, you know, containing them and, and doing everything. First half, like, we just, they came and played smash my football. Our defense came out and played real good. We got an uh, offensive opportunity to score. But the second half, we, our defense took over. So we, like, the momentum changed. And when the momentum changed, like, we just went out there and played hard as we can. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2001. Coach, to start the second half, we get the ball in, in a nice Georgia Southern drive, as you said, after the game to, uh, to start things out. Well, it really was on the ground, uh, you know, just kind of physically pounding in there and uh, taking about uh, seven or eight minutes off the clock and, and able to put it in the end zone and, and really just kind of maybe wear them down physically a little bit. To go through this drive, we'll pick it up on the 46-yard line when uh, JR takes off for an eight-yard run. but. I guess the big play there was was Adrian comes out of the game injured with a, a shoulder stinger. There. Right, I think he just kind of got a stinger. It wasn't anything serious, and I thought Hakeem Ford went in and did a great job filling in for him. Man, he was running hard, and his legs were churning. He was low to the ground, hard to tackle. After two big uh, Hakeem runs on a third and six Revere run, and another big play, Apps called for a personal foul. That keeps the drive alive after a 15-yard penalty. Right, and that was a huge penalty for them too. And. Uh, I mean, it's uh, the games hinge on that kind of stuff, and you talk to your players all the time about it. And uh, we were fortunate to be the recipient of one today. So we're second and goal from the two-yard line. Hakeem Ford hammers it in for a nice two-yard touchdown run, but it's up 17 to three. Well, again, great run. Uh, you know, we we're coming off the ball pretty good, but Hakeem got his shoulders down and got low, and and uh, you know, got it in the end zone. So with 8:50 left in the third, Georgia Southern a two-touchdown lead. Give it back to App, but after a three and out, a nice Robert LeBlanc uh, tip pass in on second and sixth there. Causes them to punt, and Anthony Williams returns it back to the 50 to give us a nice field position. Great field yeah. position, and uh, I thought it was a great defensive stand to go three and out. And, uh, you know, they're a little tired, and we get to go hammer them some more. And then on a, a first down, after picking up a, a fourth and inches play, Adrian Peterson run up the middle for 30 yards down to the nine-yard line. Right, it's a little trap play, and... Uh, you know, uh, we'd been doing some kind of combinations inside, and, uh, you know, AP was able to pop it up in there and, and get in the clear. Two plays later, it's your, your favorite play. Acrobatic touchdown run by JR, four-yard touchdown. We'll give him a six on the landing to give Georgia Southern a 24-3 to lead. Well, it's just a great play by, by Jay, and we'll let him get away with that in the playoffs. Uh, we just don't like to see that jumping over the top in the regular season. Up three touchdowns now with 4.07 left in the third quarter. Kick it back to App, and on third and ten, Freddie, a huge day and a, a huge sack on a third and ten. Well, and, and I thought our defensive line kept pressing the issue because they got some big guys, and when they throw it, once we got up on them three scores, they pretty much had to abandon running the ball and try to throw it. And, uh, you know, it's hard to be out there pass rushing all day against a big old guy, and uh, our guys kept coming. And I thought our coaches, we did a nice job rolling them and keeping fresh guys in the game. That takes us into the fourth quarter, and on fourth and four, we punt, and Kevin Davis with the, uh, the great punt coverage. So. Well, and again, up, up there, they had had a couple big returns against us. They got called back from penalties, and I thought our punt team was up to the challenge. And, uh, you know, we had good leverage on the guy, and uh, it looked like they might have been trying to run a reverse, and he couldn't get to the, the guy to hand it off, and, and uh, thought Kevin made a great play. Later in their drive on a third and 11, an odd play. Folks with a catch. The defense hitting hard like they have all day causes them to fumble into the end zone, and they give App the touchdown. 
Looked like David Young came out of there, but uh, they didn't agree. Well, I couldn't, you know, I thought I saw the ball pop out. One of their guys jumped on the ball and it popped out. I think they gave a quick touchdown signal. And, uh, you know, they had a better view of it than I did. I'm just, I'm glad we won the game. <laughs> App State cuts the lead to 14 and kind of still in it with 12.53 left. We get the ball back and on a third and 12, a, a huge play on this drive. JR to Zareem Walden for 57 yards to keep that drive alive. Big, big play, I thought, because they'd cut it down to two scores and, uh, you know, we had third and 12 and they lined up a lot of people to that set to stop the option and, and we thought about it and right before we came out from halftime. Uh, I just, I thought that 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 route might be hard to cover and, and we hadn't practiced it all week. I just drew it up for them on the board and called it and they executed it great and we caught it and had a big play. Second and seven, seven that would lead to an Adrian Peterson hops the line and takes it in from 10 yards out, 115 yards rushing for Adrian today. Puts us back up by three scores with 921 left in the game. Well, and you felt like you're uh, at least uh, the game's not over, but uh, you're more comfortable being up three scores. The student section thought it was over, chanting season's over there for a while. On fourth and ten, App State goes for it, and Michael Youngblood picks off Burchette and returns it all the way back to the 27, and he picked off one there during the first time we faced that. Right, and, and at that point, it should have been over. Mm -hmm. And uh, up three scores with the ball on their, their end, and, uh, you know, we... Uh, got down there and made an uncharacteristic play. It was probably a bad call by me. I mean, you're up three scores. You hate to just hand the ball to the fullback, you know, and uh, when you run an option offense, you got to be able to run it and pitch the ball, and we got a bad pitch and, and made a mental mistake. We tried to pick it up, and, you know, your coach to fall on those things, and we tried to pick it up, and it got bounced around, and we didn't have enough guys coming back there, and lo and behold, they pick it up and run it in for a touchdown. And that touchdown made it 31-17 Georgia Southern, gave App a little bit of breath of life back, but as soon as we recovered the onside kick uh, at the 46, a little sigh of relief there. Well, you had a sigh of relief, and now they cut it back to two scores, and it's important to try to drive and, and at least go up by three scores. And J.R. Revere would take it in on second goal from five yards out, and that would close out our scoring at 38-17 to with 2.28 left. Georgia Southern goes on to win 38-24, 27-0 at home in the playoffs, and the Georgia Southern versus the Southern Conference playoffs continue. <laughs> well, they continue. We have the uh, Furman Paladins coming in next week who have an outstanding football team. It was a, had a great game here with them just a short while ago. And uh, they'll be uh, coming back again. Uh, quality, quality offensive line, uh, you know, real physical on defense. It ought to be a heck of a game. And we'll talk more about that when we come back to the last part as we wrap it up on Georgia Southern Football 2001. back to Georgia Southern football 2001 coach if today wasn't emotional enough and the first time we faced Furman wasn't emotional enough I'm sure next week is going to be even more emotional well it's going to be a big big game because it's a, a chance for a return trip to the national championship game and uh, certainly that's one of our goals when we start the season and the closer you get to it the, the more you can almost taste it so uh, hopefully we'll have a good week of preparation and, and get ready to play and uh, you know, we're one game away from uh, having a chance to, to play for the whole thing. Very odd facing a team twice in the same year, let alone at home. Well, it is odd, and especially uh, facing two teams in a row that you played earlier in the year. So, uh, but that's the way the schedule's laid out, and that's what, uh, what we'll do. And motivation factor this week will be returning to the national championship oh. and winning three straight national championships eventually. I guarantee you that uh, if you can't get motivated to play this week against Furman and a chance to go to Chattanooga, you don't need to be out there. Uh, Lewis Ivory, a little banged up this week, wasn't supposed to play. Uh, how do you prepare for them maybe without him or do you just go the same way? Same way. You don't prepare any differently. They've got a good football team whether he plays or not. He's a great player but uh, we won't change the way we get ready to play. Coach, congratulations today on a big win. 38-24 to over App State. It's off to the semifinals. Well, thanks and I'm, I'm proud of our team. All right, when we come back.